All right, there's a YouTube channel that I've been kind of binging lately uh, as I've gotten more and more into a certain side of YouTube. And actually, it might be one from somebody you already know. Former President Majin Obama has a YouTube channel. I actually really like the stuff that he's been putting out because I think it's very casually appealing to like a wider audience. And I hit him up and I was like, hey, I like your movies and I want people to see them. Do you mind if I watch them on stream? And he was like, why are you asking me? You don't have to ask me because I don't think he cares about that shit. First, before we even watch, trust me on this, subscribe. Subscribe before you even see it. You can trust me, okay? It has the vouch. If you guys remember, this is the same Obama that trolled the f*** out of me at Evo. <laughs> a long, long time ago. Uh, first off, the voices of fighting games. Fighting games people leave. It's fun parts of fighting games, okay? It's the cool part, like talking and announcers. Dude, I wonder if, if pro wrestling has done, like, irreparable damage to commentary. I watched it, EE watched it, there's a ton of uh, people in the FGC that watched it in like shows, right? What if, what if we just watched any sport? There have been a lot of moments where they've had the power to add a cherry on top of an incredible moment. Yeah. Oh, the command grab, don't wait, daddy! Or to just utterly <laughs> ruin others. In the air and just said, please, come in my asshole. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. And as a I've never seen that clip. Uh, I didn't know they said that in DBFZ. Okay. All right. Well, don't, don't, don't analyze that. You know what he said. There's no analysis needed. He said it right there. What are they doing in DBFZ, bro? It's a reference to Dragon Ball. Oh, my bad. Does Bulma say that? <laughs> when it comes to games, in-game commentators, in-game announcers, there's a link between the game dude, and the player. The NBA Jam announcer blew my mind as a kid. That dude went crazy. For fighting games, there's a I rich history of line. iconic in-game announcer Halo performances, guy. but what makes a good one? What I want to present are just some bro. of the ones that I- What? Oh yeah, I don't like Halo's voice actor. I feel the same way about new Smash games. I like 64, I like Melee, I don't like Brawl, Smash 4, or Ultimate. Cause they're trying to do this big booming voice. No, dude. The Melee and the 64 guys are like screaming. Oh, go, there you go. See, this dude is going crazy. Listen to this fucking guy. When I hear that, it's like a dude is in the booth. It, he's looking down at the game like it's an NBA stadium. And he's just, I, it's so good. Bro. It's so good. But Dean Harrington killed for it. Super Smash Brothers Melee. And he's just, it, it, he's just shouting into an echo chamber the whole time. Yep. And makes every call and out feel extra heavy. Ready? Go! Probably the most iconic or memorable it, one it in the series like so far. It sounds like a stadium. Far. Boomer what? Coney moment? Well, he's a boomer too, so... <laughs> we, we are, we are like-minded in this way. Maybe it's an old person thing. Ultra combo! <laughs> this is the 30-something-year-old, recently divorced middle management type who just owned... He just downed a monster <laughs> and he's in the middle of a Slipknot concert. Insane. Yeah, this 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 announcer reminds me of a guy who like held on to it his whole life, kept it together, and then he lost his job, and the first night he goes out to karaoke and he just goes fucking nuts on like Mega Death or or Gwar or something. This dude they go into detail on why and how they made it that way. Welcome Jesus back Christ. to the stick. I need you to give us custom I need enthusiasm. Welcome I need excitement. Welcome to the King of Iron Fist Tournament 4. Tekken Sounds like a four. robot. Loud equals good? Maybe. All right. That's cool. Bro. Third strike. I feel bad saying it's just cool. Speaks nah, directly strike to hits. a specific third strike generation hits, of players. Bro. That's what I expected. It's like this urban late 90s hip hop inspired presentation style. It's obviously a product of its time. <laughs> now. Find a new rival. I feel like Third Strike like captured a a period of time better than like any other game. Like Third Strike just some somehow hits this like 1999 to 2001 vibe better than any piece of media. I don't know why. There's something about Third Strike. Man. It's different. <laughs> Isn't that just like? Uh, this one's a tough act to follow in its own way. It's remained generally consistent it's throughout Khan, the series. Right? 
specifically the UMK3 and MK9 ones I really like. Maybe just because <laughs> of the absurd expansions on fatalities and the callouts. Here comes Daredevil! Uh, Guilty Gear. Straight up. I'm a sucker for this one. Specifically the XX series just because I didn't of how know XX well had it meshes with the game's feeling I and played style. this game. Heaven or hell? <laughs> Let's rock! What? Select your character. Why does he one sound like that? Solid... Sounds kind of nerdy. It sounds like a program. Alpha 3! Bro, I had a month where I was addicted to this game, and I don't know why. I figured out how to emulate arcade games, and I played the fuck out of this game. And I don't- I just really like Daydon. I played it alone. Just doing arcade mode. Nobody blink! Oh, I remember this. Let's party! <laughs> Beat him up, guys! <laughs> it all depends on your skill! This guy just wants to hey, see violence. Come on, stand up! I'm trying to like rationalize in my head where this guy is standing while he's saying it. Because he can't be close to the fighters. If the fighters hear him saying this shit when he's close, they're going to knock his teeth out. And it sounds like he's shooting. Yeah, he's shouting from a megaphone like across the street. He's watching a bum fight. He's an instigator, really. What a terrible fighter! D wow. That's it, buddy. Am I fighting him? Sharpen your fangs. It's not the end. I are we fighting? That's enough. Unbeatable! <laughs> He's like flexing in the booth. Oh, I'm beatable. He's just. This dude is enthusiastic. This battle is about to explode. I love this guy. CBS 2. I love this guy. This is nothing too intrusive, but just present enough in big moments and in little. I, I feel like CBS 2 is cool, but it also kind of sucks because, like, I feel like the quality and the art style between these two. These two don't look like they belong in the same game, right? Looks like Salty Bet. Yeah. It's literally Mujin. I mean, the game itself is really cool. That's what we like to call big damage. I love team-based fighters. Come out on top. KO. I, the Not. KO is iconic. That KO is iconic. It's enthusiasm, and bro. And matches on that tone. Get ready for the fight of your life. The kid gloves are off. The team that holds. I like her. Go down. She's and my BCI favorite. Was, I put the coin into this machine, and the machine spoke back to me. Let's go, crazy! Yeah. That moment's nice. What it really is, is I think more games need, uh, there's there's a lot of attention paid to like visual splendor, right? Set piece moments. But I, I feel like there's a lot of credit that should be paid to audio cues in games. I said this about Smash. When Young Link hits the up B, that, yeah, that is like iconic, right? And I wish all Smash characters had something like that, that is tied to like a core mechanic of their gameplay. Not all of them do. But it may, it's it's this audio cue that's like, oh shit, this is going down now. Because Young Link's Up B is very important for him in gameplay, you know? I've never heard the Skullgirls announcer, hold on. Everybody warmed up, quiet on the set, nobody blink. Beat him up, guys. Oh. Let's do this in one take. I like the I like the sort of golden age of Hollywood kind of deal that Skullgirls has going on, like the theming. I don't want to say character design, because <laughs> that makes it sound, but I do like the character design. I think it's neat. Yeah, Big Band is one of the coolest fighting game characters, like, ever. I, I, dude, I was so mind blown when I found out you could do this. Oh, yeah, get some happy birthday. Let's see if Havoc can bring this back. It almost has five meters. It's so cool. This is actually terrifying. Oh Ooh. my goodness. Happy birthday. How hard is that? Feel like it would be kind of hard. Very, pretty hard, very. You need a lot of practice for that. <laughs> So he also has another video. They have voices of fighting games talking about announcers, but also stages. Now, I have not seen any of this one. And, bro, every time I watch a fighting game tournament of something I haven't seen before, I'm like, where the fuck are they? It happened to me in Street Fighter V with the fucking bear in the crowd. There's just a bear popping off. That's what that, I want to learn about that shit. But one huge factor is the atmosphere. I mean, for as brilliant of a scene as it is, does it hit the same way if it takes place in a Chuck E. Cheese next to the skee ball machines? <laughs> Can I watch that full video somewhere? Wait, there's a whole ABC News. When you think of the national Chuck E. Cheese chain. I have to see if this would be his hype. Boys tried to you break know? it up. Witnesses say it was over game coupons. The fight was Saturday. <laughs> there was another fight Thursday. Two women fought and ended Lady up with needed her tootsie injuries. rolls and sticky hands. I get it. Fighting at Chuck Times e. are tough. Fighting over coupons is so funny, too. This is exactly what Chucky wants. Just devaluing your own currency for his own. 
The most basic approach to stages is to just come up with shots of cities or a variety of landscapes. So yeah. whether it's a shot of the Hong Kong skyline or you're in a forest or you're in the Manji Valley, the idea is simple. You fight in a city or you fight in a nature setting. Like a bio. SNK, however, deserves special credit for their insane sprite work. We could do an entire video on their waterfalls and nature Dude, landscapes yeah. in their stages. Dude, poor SNK. Did anybody get fucked over as much other than Sonic? Did anybody get fucked over as much as SNK when you went to 3D? This is what they did, and now their games just don't look good. Don't look bad, right? But it's always like, eh. With such a huge range of stages, right? And there's so many that are just iconic. Talk about like Poolside, the Sheep Stage, the Penguins from Foz, the, the, the Tag stage. One School. There's so many, but the ones that they nail yeah. the best, in my opinion, is the dramatic scene. Tekken the, is there's nonsense, like tension though. Of gravity. This series is so stages, silly like, and goofy. Wilderness or you know, I think about Fountain of Dreams from Smash Brothers Melee, Best stage right? in just this Smash dark history, background. Bro. And yet the fountain is, you know, very colorful and vibrant, but it's not super distracting or intrusive. Best stage the in Smash history. The reflection on the ground. Man, Sucks we didn't get the to keep it. Just creates a really charming stage. So sad. You know, I, I want to bring up the Alpha stages too, right? Alpha 2, I think Nash's stage. Charlie's stage. There's something about just like the here. hovering aircraft in the background. I don't know, man. It's just, it's very That's cool to look at. It just feels like you're about to take off and go somewhere. No, nah, I feel like but I'm about course, to get shot. Alpha, you have to oh, talk this one about goes crazy. Stage. It's this one so goes many crazy, other versions dude. Across different There's something really cool about stages that are based on real places or stages that could be anywhere and then ah, making sure. it feel like some kind of special battle. I hear where you're going with I this. I think about okay, stuff yeah. like the Sagat stage, the Ayataya ruins in Thailand. I've been there. Uh, uh, it's, it, it's, it's sick. Really, really cool. Okay, I've never seen this one. Why are we fighting down here? Are those the feet? I know the normal Sagat stage where it's like in the background. While we're talking about this, what kind of music is this? What is the genre? It's like moon jazz. I bet this is my favorite song from Street Fighter 2, so I've always wanted to know, but. Fusion techno jazz. Keep in mind, this came out in like 1992. There's something very compelling and, and very engaging with a stage that is based on a real place like that. If you can go there. Oh my god. On the other end, you have That's stages cool. like the drive in at night from Street Fighter 4, which could be, you could be anywhere I in love California the drive -in, at any drive in. I feel like these fighting game stages, particularly in Street Fighter, are the best areas of cultural interest that people take for granted. But it's like something that you don't really think about, but it represents the culture, especially in a game like Street Fighter, where the point is to really uh, embrace the worldwide aspect of it. You look around, you're like, man, this could be a fighting game stage, you know? A cool <laughs> twist on this idea is the dynamic scene, which is where the stage changes between rounds or when characters yeah. swap out. SNK. Bro, what is Billy Kane doing in the middle of the street, or, bro? What are him and Iori doing here? Get out! Just standing in the middle of the road. The I would go around man. Billy Kane. A, a he could, he could really fuck soccer. up my car. On top of that, some shatter the windshield. Power changes <laughs> for these kinds of stages are influenced man. by gameplay decisions made by players. These kinds of stage ideas are cool because they offer the players a sense of control over where you end up. Of course, this is a gameplay uh, DOA, staple by right? now in games like DOA, yeah, Tekken, dude. Uh, Dragon Ball Fighters, and Strive. DOA blew but my I think mind about when I did that. Injustice One, it, the Hall of Justice transition has is, is always been really cool. <laughs> but also, I forgot about Injustice One, bro. In Injustice One, you would get knocked off like the stage. Justice and you would get one. knocked into the middle of this fight with two giant people in the background. And it, it, the Hall of Justice. And it, the, these Injustice stage transitions lasted so goddamn long. It was so long. You just had to sit there and be mad, which makes it extra funny if you did it to the person. If you're the person that knocked them into it, it is so funny to just watch them suffer. It's Always terrific. Been really cool to me. But also, like, if, to take it back, she Dragon throws Ball's you back. Hyper Dimension. I think about Injustice One, right? The the throne room in Atlantis. <laughs> then there's the mess hall with the with the pig. Bro, I, why is Joker dressed like that? Yeah, Injustice is a meme game. Injustice is what we experts call kusoge. It means not a good game. And the problem with these games is that you can't turn these off, I think. I'm pretty sure these are just on. So if you're winning, you just camp the meat. Both players have to agree to turn them off. Maybe that was it. Maybe that was what it was. Because I remember finding out that I couldn't turn them off. And then like you'd be be like somebody be beating you and then they just sit on the meat. It's like, well, what the fuck do I do now? DOA, I think the most iconic one is the electrified cage. Oh Mortal Kombat, of course, has these in stride <laughs> the with cage. various fatalities. But even some of the other 2D games kind of feature this kind of idea, right? 
think about <laughs> Hugo's room. From some of the what the fuck? Other two D games. What happened here? Did he die too? It's kind of featured this kind of idea. Did Johnny Cage also die? I th okay. I thought Johnny Cage was like under it with him. Like they both went. Would that really kill you? These things are hollow. I don't know if it would. Think about Hugo's room from Third Strike. The fact that every impact that you have in the match, <laughs> the toys shake in the background. But I think one of the things go up and down. Why he's got bananas the on the floor? He is a hoarder. What's going on here? But I think one of the coolest ones of all time is CBS One in the back alley. There's a spotlight oh, where shit. if your characters go in front of it, I've never the seen shadows this. of what they're doing in match That's are cool. blown up on the back wall. The stages that I tend to gravitate towards are, I don't know why this is, but I really like pushing people <laughs> in the water. So for Calip towards are, Bro, I don't what know kind why. of jump is this? What is he doing? This is whoop. <laughs> I really I, I do I love why, it's just fun to play around the then, animation you know. of falling into the water that's in all these games. I love these. You no, know, you juggle them in. I love this. I'm I'm so happy that they added in special animations for you falling in to the water and then you run off yourself it's or so good. Phenomenal. Another aspect of stages that I think about a lot are, are background characters or even cameo character appearances. Uh, I just take issue with KOF 13. Uh, I don't like how they did my man Marco. Why they put him in the jungle with all these sad? <laughs> you go all stage in KOF 13. That is kind of weird. That is a weird choice uh, for them like to do. I don't like how they did my man Marco. Why they put him in the mm. jungle with all these savages? Rugal stage. Analyzing in SNK for that also one. Also, gets Capcom, of course, also has a history of doing this. Dude. I'm less of a fan of the modern Frankenstein stages, where they just kind of acid drop NPCs from other stages. But Marvel stages are cool as hell. So There's the fucking bear, dude. I was watching Evo, and there was just a bear in the crowd. I was like, wait, what? I was like, oh, that must be a characters thing. You know what I mean? Like, that must be one of the characters in the fight is it brings a bear. No, he's just there. Or the overpass from Street Fighter 4 or Metro City from Alpha 3 or the NBC. What was the, the overpass? Overpa the overpass had something in the back. Oh, it's this kid. I forgot. I was like, the overpass had something weird in the background, I remember. But it's this kid that's just doing this <laughs> the whole time. There's the one where Beast chilling in the background. <laughs> the character's trapped. What are Beast and Blanca doing? Just chill. They're playing poker? I is Blanca's not smart. Penis rock? Yeah, that's what I saw too. I didn't want to say it. They're laughing at penis rock. Maybe. The ultimate equalizer. <laughs> penis. And Beast is like, hmm, yes, rather humorous. It does resemble the human anatomy. <laughs> Very funny. Peter Parker on the scene trying to bless the gram. But you know, like Rugal's Panther, right? Hey, Peter Sometimes Parker. you don't even act around. I never realized he's standing right there. Yeah, but he's doing like the pose, right? <laughs> Why is he doing? Why is he? That would give away your your fucking secret identity immediately. That guy stands just like Spider Man. Uh, Exert with the sheriff. Isn't he a character now? That's not him. Ah, it's his brother. Ah. Why does he have the infinite <laughs> infinite burgers? Good lord. In closing, I want you to think about what some of your favorite stages are and why they're your favorite. And holla at me in the comments. Fountain of Dreams. You know, for me, always. like I mentioned earlier. Street Fighter 2 China? What, in the streets? The Chun Li one? That's nah, okay. Delfino Plaza? It's pretty good. Hollow Bastion? Shut up. Please go subscribe to Majin Obama. Check out his stuff. And tell him Coney sent you.